Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Evidence and in today's video I am going to show you how to create a new Anaconda environment. As you can see right here, I am in Anaconda Navigator and these are the environments I already have. But in this video I am going to show you how to create a new Anaconda environment. Let's dive in. So as you can see, I've written down these instructions right here. And if you click in the link in the description below, you'll find out how to get access to these instructions. So to create a new Anaconda environment, the first thing is to navigate to the folder we are going to be working on. So this is the folder I'm going to be working under. And once you are at the folder that you're going to be working on, to create your environment, you do run conda create environment name python 3.7. So let's do that. So run conda create new and stands for new. Let's call it test environment. That's environment name is test python equal to 3.7. Oh. <laughs> You don't need the run command, you just need to start with conda. So let me go ahead and copy this. Alright. Alright, so now that we are done and start creating our new environment, just to verify, I'm going to open an account prompt and make sure our test environment is there. As you can see, now we have a new environment here called test. So our environment was successfully created. Now the next step is to install the requirements that we are going to be using for this project. So you could install your requirement from the Anaconda Navigator, but we are going to do it from the command line. We just created a new environment. Let's go ahead and add our requirements to it. So to install the requirements in the conda environment we just created, we need to activate the conda environment. If you are on Mac, you do SOX activate Anaconda environment. But if you are on Windows, you do conda activate environment name. So I'm on Windows, I'm going to do conda activate test the environment name is test let's go ahead and click enter as you can see our environment here changes from base to test so now that our environment is active let's go ahead and add our requirement first of all let me show you in this folder i have a document called requirement.txt this right here is my requirement.txt. This is what's inside. I have IPy kernel, I have vendors, scikit learn, scikit image. I could add more stuff to it. Actually, let me just go ahead and remove this so that installation will be faster. So I only have uh, two things in my requirement.txt. So inside this folder that I installed my Anaconda environment in, I have a requirement.txt. And this requirement.txt is what I'm going to be using to install packages in this environment. And again, like I said, you could also install packages in your environment using Anaconda Navigator. So now that our environment is active, you're going to do pip install requirement.txt. So we're going to do pip install r requirements.txt and if you call your if you call the document that has your requirements something else that's what you put here but I got my requirement.cst and that's what I'm using and let's click enter and things are being in, being installed right now 
while this is installing, I'm going to launch Jupyter Lab just to show you something. Right here, I'm in Jupyter Lab. And when you open a Jupyter Lab document, it will ask you which environment you want to use. So right now, I'm using a virtual environment for this right here. And when I click on this, I have different environments, right? I have Python Interactive, which is comms native with Jupyter Lab. And then I have my other environment that I have created. And as you can see right here, my test Anaconda environment is not in this list. So the next step is to add the Anaconda environment so that it, it will be available in Jupyter Lab. So right here, our requirement of TST is done downloading. And now the next step is to add this environment to Jupyter Lab. So even if you go to Anaconda Navigator and you click on test, you will see everything we've installed so far. We've installed IPy kernel, we've installed pandas, you know, so you can come here just to verify that everything is installed correctly. But it didn't give us any error over here, so everything was installed correctly. To add this environment to Jupyter Lab, you need to run this command. So we are going to do Python m ipy kernel install user name test username is like was um the name of the environment you want to install and then display name so basically in ipy in Jupyter lab what do i want this environment to be called i'm going to call it test tutorial and make sure you put space <laughs> between user and name if not to throw an error enter now everything is installed so just by running this single line of code, it's added this test environment to Jupyter Lab. Now if we go back to Jupyter Lab, we may have to refresh it, but let's see. If you already have Jupyter Lab open, make sure you refresh it to see your new environment in Jupyter Lab. So I'm going to refresh this. And then I'm going to click on this. As you can see, the test tutorial is right there. The environment we just created. Then I the environment we call test that we put on Jupyter Lab using the name test tutorials right there. So now we can use test tutorial. And just to verify, right? So like if we have pandas in this environment, which we do, we should be able to import pandas without throwing an error. And we were able to import pandas successfully. So that's good. So we just created our environment. So after our environment has been created, we can deactivate Anaconda environment. Actually to deactivate the Anaconda environment, you have to do Conda deactivate. And once you do conda deactivate, it goes back to the base environment. So now you can launch Jupyter Lab or you can continue working on the project using the new environment you just created. To get this instruction that I wrote out here in this notepad, you can just go to machinelearningeducation.com slash free. And machinelearningeducation.com slash free is where I put all my resources. So in this video, I used this resource manual 
and in a different video i might um write out resources like this and i just like to take all my resources and organize it in one place so i don't have to like keep searching for it also you don't have to like install different things to get access to the resources so just go to machine learning education.com slash free and you'll be able to get access to this notepad and also you get access to any other resource that i use in my video so if i use python notebooks or if i use um some kind of document in my videos or even in my blog post all my resources are put together in one place so you can have easy access to it so just go to machine learning education machine learning education.com slash free to get access to this document and you can also visit me online at evidencen.com. This is my primary website where I have all my blog posts. And this is where I have all my free resources, machinelearningeducation.com slash free. That's it for this video. And I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.